Today we're going to go over the basics of building a new process in Integrify. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is click on processes under the administration section of the task menu and then click add process and you can choose new or import. So today we're going to be doing new and then you're going to have to give it a name and assign it a category and you can give it an optional description if needed and then click save. So as soon as you create the process, it's going to take you to the process flow screen. And by default, it's going to be in development mode for testing. And it's going to have a start and end on your process flow. So we're going to be creating a basic process with a couple milestones, a form task, an approval, and a few notifications. To start creating your process, it's a drag and drop environment so we can grab different task types and drag them into the flow view. I'm gonna drag a milestone task here first and I'm going to name it request started. And then the way that I can connect these tasks together is by hovering over until I see the uh, pink bar and then drag it and attach it to the task type. So here I'm going to attach this one to the form task as well. I'm going to rename this form task here. You can either name it by double clicking or right clicking under configuration and edit detail. You can change the name here. So I'm just going to do first form here and click save. And now we've renamed it. And there's a couple ways to config that we need to configure the form task. So you can see this yellow exclamation mark in this triangle here. So under configuration and configure task, we need to attach a form that we've created. So I'm going to click on it here and choose a form and click save. So now that I've added a form, you can see that the advanced settings tab has shown up. Under the advanced settings tab, there's fields to capture and prefill settings that you might need to use later. The next way that you're going to need to configure your form is assign a recipient. So right click under recipients and assign one here. So usually the first form task is assigned to the requester. So how you do that is under this filter icon here under dynamic, you can choose the requester by clicking the plus mark and it goes over onto the right side. And now you can see that the exclamation point icon has disappeared. So the form task has been fully configured and is ready to go. So the next thing that we're going to do is add another milestone. I can hover over a task before letting go of the mouse key and it'll already attach an arrow to connect them. So that's just a good quick tip, but I'm going to do a milestone request submitted. And so we have a couple milestones and our first form. The next thing that I'm going to add is an approval task. And so you can see this approval task right here has the exclamation point in it. So the things that this approval task wants, it wants us to configure options and a recipient. We're going to right click under configuration and configure task. And we're going to add some approval options. So we'll add approved and click add. And then we'll add a denied option and click add. And then under this advanced settings tab, you can allow users to enter comments. It can be no optional or they are required. And you can also choose forms that can be displayed in the approval and allowing the approval by email. By selecting this forms to be displayed in this approval, this will show a completed view of the form data that a requester entered on the approval task. So I'll show you what that looks like. So we'll save it and close, and then I'm going to run through a test request. So I'm going to fill out the form with the necessary information as I was the requester and click submit. So now once it goes to the approval process, the manager can come in and click on this form and see the completed data and what the requester submitted under the form. Now that you've configured your approval options, you can see that the yellow yield icon is still present, which will mean that it needs to be configured before it will execute when running. So 
This task will not execute if you run a request because it has not been fully configured. Right now, what it's looking for is a recipient. So we're gonna right click under recipients and choose an approver for this task and close it out. So now you can see the yellow yield icon has gone away. So now you can see it disappear. The approval task is fully configured. Next, we're going to branch this workflow based on information that was entered in the approval task. So milestones are used as status indicators. So we're going to build a path for a milestone with the request approved and a milestone with the request denied. So I'm gonna drag these in here and choose approved. I'm gonna put request approved. I'm going to add another one that says request denied and you can see that they stacked on top of each other but if you drag and drop and move them around there we go so request denied and request approved now that we've added two different paths we got to assign some rules so under the request denied milestone we're going to right click under configuration and configure rules we're going to add a new rule under data and we're going to choose the approval task and choose that the approval choice is denied. So what we're doing here is we're saying it is only going to go this path. It's only going to go under the request denied path if this approval choice was denied. So we're going to add that rule and close it out. And we're going to do the same thing for the request approved under configuration and configure rules. We're going to add a new rule data, the approval task. We're going to choose approval choice is approved this time. So now what it's saying is it's only going to go down this path here if the request was approved under this approval. So now another quick tip that I like to give with building processes is this auto arrange option. It will pretty it up a little, make the lines a little bit more cleaner and more symmetrical. So you can do a horizontal view or a vertical view. So I'm going to keep it horizontal for now and we're gonna move on. So after these request approve and request denied milestones, we're gonna add a couple notifications. So we're gonna grab a notification here, general, and drag another one here. So we're gonna do a request approved notification, and we'll do a request denied notification. So we'll drag the lines to connect them here. And now the exclamation point wanting to be configured, that's going to be a recipient. So we are going to grab the requester. So usually if a request is approved or denied, we would want to let the requester know. So we're going to grab the requester there under this filter icon again under dynamic and add the requester in. So the way that we're going to configure these notifications, we'll just do something really simple. Under configuration and notification settings, you can edit the subject line of the email and the body. So we'll just do your request has been approved. Grab that and put it in the body of the email, please contact manager for more information. Something quick and easy. So another thing that you can add in here, you can add in data, any values from like the form task. You can add in specific dates, times. You can add attachments into these notifications. And then you also have the following link to the task as well. You can really customize these notifications, but we're going to just keep it simple for now. The request has been approved. We're going to save that and close it out. Now we're going to do the same thing with the request denied notification. We'll put please contact manager more information and close it out. So in this instance, if we wanted to create another path here, there would be more task types to drag in, but I'm just gonna leave it for now because we wanna keep this simple, the first process that we're creating. 
your first process is ready to start testing. By default, when you first create a process, it's going to be in develop mode. So under this process detail tab, you're gonna see that it's in the published status of development mode. And by default, the user that is signed in at that time that is running the request will receive all notifications and any uh, approvals or the form just by default since it's in development mode. The user that's signed in, they'll be receiving all the proper notifications. The next option under publish status is testing. This will be a option where you can send it to more users other than the process developer. So once you put it in testing mode, all the proper recipients that have been assigned approval task notifications, they will be receiving those notifications, but it just won't be counted towards future reporting. And also you can filter out this data in reports and it will be flagged as testing. The next published status that is available is production. This is going to be when it is live and ready for your end users to kick off that process and anyone can use it as long as they have the proper roles and permissions. The final option under published status is inactive. This can be used when you've created a new process and you don't want this one to be used anymore. So no new requests can be started under this process under the inactive published status, but in progress requests can still be completed. So when you click run request and start request, you're going to see that the first form task is going to go to you. We're going to submit it. And now we have the first manager approval task. So approve or denied. And then they can also see the form and all the details that were entered here. So we're going to approve it and submit. So now you can see all the task types, the task history, and then if you click on this flow view, you can see what path it took and where it went. If you are changing the development status or the published status here, just make sure to scroll down and click save and you are ready to go. Now that you have created your first process, you are ready to start testing. If you have any questions at all, contact your customer success team.